Hi, let's talk now about traumatic brain injuries and concussions in the elderly, because it's, it's different for the older folks. TBI is a leading cause of death and disability globally. 2.8 million people seek medical treatment in the US annually, but older adults have the highest combined incidence of TBI-related ED visits, hospitalizations, and deaths. They used to be tied with the young ones, four and under, but now they are not. It, it, they are on their own. Um, and it often call, comes from simple things like falls, walking, transfers, automobile accidents, uh, things like that. Uh, so TBI in older adults, they have a higher morbidity and mortality. They are slower to recover. They have worse functional, cognitive, and psychosocial outcomes. However, there is a subset, even some with severe TBI, that do really well. So we can't just consider age and severity when we are making decisions. And often um, the decision to, um, to end life support happens within the first 72 hours with this older population, and they may need more time in order to be able to begin to uh, heal enough to um, to no longer require the life support. So we need to take those things into consideration. Uh, they are more susceptible to concussions based on the way that the, the brain is aging. Uh, the vascularization is more likely to, to rip and tear. And there is also a greater intracranial um, space. So we'll get to that in the next one. But so even a fall to the knees or bumping heads with a grandchild, maybe the grandchild's fine and runs off or cries for a moment and then runs off, um, doesn't mean that the older adult wasn't injured. And they do have a higher risk of intracranial bleeding. The signs are often delayed because they have a, a bigger intracranial space. So if there's a bleed, in someone who is younger and there's no space, you have the brain and you have the skull without much space, you're going to see symptoms of that. And they're gonna be significant, uh, life-threatening symptoms very quickly. You're not gonna have that necessarily in an older adult who has some atrophy of the brain because that space is gonna be bigger. It's gonna take more blood over more time if it's a slow bleed to, to make those symptoms come about. So we have to be aware of that. They're less, less likely to be diagnosed and to be treated. Uh, so on, an, on an, an individual basis, we need to question whether they're going to be able to participate in treatment. We can't just make a blanket decision that no, they can't benefit. Um, even if they have other issues like dementia, you think about adding a an ocular motor, an eye issue or a vestibular issue onto somebody, regardless of, of what's happening for them already, um, that can be really debilitating. So we need to just, on a, on a person by person basis, consider whether they can participate and they can participate in this specific type of treatment. And maybe we can get, get creative and maybe we have a caregiver go with them to, let's say the physical therapist, if they can't do that regularly, and the physical therapist, the, um, the caregiver can learn the, the exercises. Uh, you know, we have to think a little creatively in order to, to help treat them. Diagnosis is complicated by dementia and by cognitive disorders. We'll address that in another video. So we have to watch for danger signs in this group, and we may have to be more alert to them when they come back into a program or back home because that chance of them having a bleed is greater and we're less likely to see it as quickly. So things like one pupil larger than the other, drowsiness, can't wake them up, a headache that gets worse, not going away, obviously things that are like slurred speech, weakness, numbness, decreased coordination, vomiting, nausea, seizures, um, unusual behavior, increased confusion, restlessness, agitation, uh, and then uh, loss of consciousness. So this we talk about in another video on the six types of concussion. I just wanted to put this here to show that yes, there are treatments for concussion and this is to reinforce we need to be looking at it at a case by case basis. Maybe they can participate in one kind of therapy but not another. So what can we do for them? And um, that is it and I thank you so much for watching, this is our, um, our grant support. Thanks.